What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest, going through the latest Detroit Lions news. And today, we are here with some free agency talk. The Detroit Lions made two re-signings recently that I wanted to update everybody on. But also, they are said to have a player visit today, which by the time you're seeing this, he probably already has. And that's a cornerback from the Houston Texans and Cleveland Browns. So let's get it started. Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we are back with some Detroit Lions news. Now, we're going to dive into this cornerback, and that'll be the main focus of today's video. It won't be a complete full breakdown as usual. We have not signed the player yet, but as we know, the last time we had a player in for a visit, DJ Reader was signing that contract. So I wanted to talk about him a little bit today. Plus, we brought him up a couple times in our live streams that we've done really throughout the week. We just brought him up. I've never really talked about him extensively, but I brought him up. So we're going to dive into him a little bit deeper today. Now, also on the flip side, we have to update some of the most recent moves that the Lions made. So I'll start there first. Quick little update. First off, Chase Lucas has signed with the San Francisco 49ers. This has been out for a little while now, but I just want to say congratulations, Chase Lucas. He was an exclusive rights free agent. He was the one of the six that we did not place the tender on. We did not bring him back. And I got to believe it was because there was some interest out there from other teams that maybe the Detroit Lions were just like, okay, we're not going to bring you back because to be honest with you, there's not really a clear-cut role for you getting snaps defensively and hopefully that with the San Francisco 49ers he's able to get some sort of opportunity over there like maybe there's a door that San Francisco has open that we seemingly just weren't going to have open the Lions kind of reset the cornerback room looks like they could be adding another one and they've added a lot of pieces already to that position so outside of special teams and practice squad the opportunity for him to step into a role probably would have been super unlikely here so I'm hoping that with San Francisco he maybe gets that chance he's always seemingly played well especially in the preseason in that slot cornerback role it's just been a very niche role for him and to get snaps for the Lions it just felt very unlikely unless things went horribly wrong and we've seen that at times but then he's plugged into spots that weren't necessarily natural for him now outside of that the Lions also re-signed two players first off we have long snapper Scott Daly a 30 year old long snapper is back and he had played as our long snapper all the way up through week eight and then, of course, week eight, he was injured, required surgery. Then we saw Jake McQuaid enter the fold. But outside of that, Scott Daly was our long snapper for half of the season. And now he's back, set to be our long snapper for this upcoming season. Unless, you know, the Lions decide to draft one in round six. <laughs> Stop. The other news that we have to touch on is that Khalil Dorsey has been re-signed by the Lions, the cornerback. Now, we got to see him a little bit this past season, and I won't spend too much time here with Cleo Dorsey because I feel like I have past breakdowns on this player, specifically from this last preseason. We could dive into him a little bit more a little bit later on, but I love Cleo Dorsey for depth. Of course, there's a special teams value that he adds, and outside of playing on the field goal team, he plays on every single special teams unit for the Lions. He also has some kick returns in his background, averaging just over 20 yards per kick return, but... When you talk about playing the cornerback position, that is an area where I was always a big fan. And it started off in preseason. I thought he was our best cornerback in the preseason outside of, you know, like, who are your starters? But the guys that were getting the snaps and were kind of on the bubble, right, to making the team, I always felt Khalil Dorsey was the guy that stood out the most. Every single week, I felt like he got better. He was very good against the run, which I could have seen it be an area where I was like, I have some knocks there just from in the past. But with us, I thought he handled the run extremely well. And what I loved about Dorsey was really everything coverage from footwork the line of scrimmage, the football intelligence that he also brought with him, and we got to see some of that in the regular season as well. He was definitely limited athletically, but from a technical side, he played so smooth, and I can just visualize some of the moments that he had in preseason that stand out, where he's able to get in someone's hips and just ride him up the sideline. I thought Khalil Dorsey was really strong in the preseason, and ultimately he got his opportunity against the Denver Broncos. He also played the next week against the Vikings a little bit, much less snaps, and it was kind of like a rotation between him and Kendall Vilder initially. Initially, and then ultimately it just became Kendall Vilder. And it felt like once the Lions signed Kendall Vilder, it was like, that's probably where we're going to go with this. But, Khalil, we're going to give you some snaps. We're going to give you an opportunity. And that's not to say he was great necessarily when he stepped in, right? And you could definitely see some of the limitations when he was out there. But at the same time, reliability, which was huge as an undersized cornerback, five foot nine, 185 pounds. This was a guy that in the past we've seen flexibility inside, outside. But with us, a lot of the things that I felt that showed up in preseason that you liked still showed up in the regular season as well. He's a little bit limited athletic athletically in just terms of long speed alone and also in terms of size. 
size, but what you did love about him is technically speaking, there was a lot of things that were still sound. The football awareness still showed up. Then also some of the coverage versatility, cover three, played man coverage, half turn, showed a lot of that flexibility still in the regular season. So he didn't seem to get much of a runway, much of a big opportunity to actually take on a majority of snaps, but I think a lot of things that you liked in the preseason still showed up, and he definitely feels like a big-time special teamer, which we know the Lions value, but also on top of that, a guy that I want to see develop a little bit more. I just I, I want to keep this guy around. I want to see what he looks like in training camp this upcoming offseason. So for depth, just depth alone, I love this for the Lions. And I'm glad that he got brought back. Okay, me and the Lions are on the same page with that one. I love me some Cleo Dorsey this past year. All right, now let's move on to this move. This is where I wanted to focus. And I'm going to try to make this a little bit quicker. That way I get the video out quicker. Because if it's too long, the video may go out. And then we might sign him or something. Or he signs somewhere else. And then it's like the video doesn't make any sense. We're going to be talking about Tavier Thomas, the cornerback, most recently from the Houston Texans. Listed at 5'10", 205 pounds. Played college football at Ferris State. So, of course, local in that sense. And statistically speaking, Really, over the past three years, he's been really strong. He was immediately someone that caught my eye when I first watched him, and this is why I brought him up a few times. And initially, I was looking for cornerbacks that I thought would fit kind of into that list that I made of cornerbacks that the Lions could target. But seemingly, he was a slot corner, and I thought, athletically speaking, he was a little bit limited to playing kind of that slot cornerback role. So I ultimately just did not put him on the list, understanding that we have a guy like Brian Branch, though we can use depth. I also thought that Chase Lucas would be brought back, but that did not happen. Definitely like this guy for a depth piece there specifically, and we'll talk about that. However, However, he is one of those players that as soon as you start watching him, you're like, I like this guy. This... I like this guy, right? You talk about the motor that he brings, the run support that he also brings to the table, the willingness to be a good blitzer, and also just to me, what stands out, the sense of urgency. That's the vibe that I get uh, get every time I watch him, and I think at times you can maybe lack some patience where you'll feel like he'll overset in some press looks, and he'll kind of get himself in some awkward positions, then he's forced to recover, and I don't recover, and I don't think some of the natural recovery is there. We'll talk about that, but at the same time, you also get a real sense of urgency, especially against the run, really fast eyes and coverage. I like some aspects of his ball skills as well and while he's a little bit limited in certain aspects specifically you talk about height he's a little bit on the shorter side and I think he can be a little stiff in certain areas as well he is one of those players that you love to watch and immediately when you think about the guy's long speed just by testing numbers though I don't think he has the same play speed as his number as a 43840 would suggest coming out of college I don't think he plays to that speed when you talk about special teams value and you talk about the traits that it takes to be a key special teams player and you're talking about a very very good tackler one of the better form tacklers that are out there at the cornerback position. Also, willingness to tackle. The stout build that he brings, at times he looks like a linebacker that's playing slot coverage, but then also strictly just pure straight line speed. It opens up a lot of special teams value. And that's one thing that he's had, but I'm here to talk about what I think about him as a cornerback specifically. Past year in just over 350 snaps, he allowed a 110 pass rating, but a year before, 50, a 59 pass rating. Year before that, 71.7 pass rating. And when I watch him in coverage, to me, there are definite limitations that would probably press him into to the slot of definitely being his best position. I think there's certain coverage styles that fit him best. There is still a lot to like when he's in an area that you like him, right? If, if it's in a certain coverage that you feel confident with him playing, he's really fun to watch in some of those spots. So we'll start with him as a press corner, and this is not an area that I necessarily love, Tavier Thomas. I think, again, like I said, he can get very anxious and seemingly overset in these spots, and it kind of throws everything off for him. I also think he has real issues, and this isn't just in press. I think he has some problems sticking in trails specifically, more so through complex routes is where it shows up. Not necessarily the first break, but more so through complex routes. Also, his transitions, they can be a little bit slower to open, while also kind of losing some of that natural burst. So you're talking about the fluidity to get off the line of scrimmage, open himself up, turn it, and run. That's where you lose some ground. Now, if you're talking about transitions at a 45-degree angle, I think he's super, super natural there. And he also has the quick feet and also the balance that he keeps under his pads, which allows him to transition those spots pretty darn well. So through the transition process, when he attempts to squeeze routes, get on the hip of a receiver. There, one, he doesn't have great length, so I think at times he doesn't really get a clean shot on the receiver. Well, at the same time, he also tends to get caught behind trying to squeeze the route, and he puts himself in the trail positions where sometimes he'll kind of lose speed doing it. He'll get caught in trail, and then he has to play through a trail position for the rest of the route. And at slot, you know, you can kind of lean into your help. Out wide, at times, that can get you into some real trouble for sure. At both spots, I guess it can give you trouble. What I do like is that when he gets into those trail positions is that he does 
does anticipate route lean. I think one of the big strengths of this player, and it definitely shows up level one, level two, playing underneath zone coverage, is his ability to anticipate route breaks, also read route concepts that are coming along, also based on down and distance. We'll show a great clip of that. But in trail specifically, that is an area where I do like his ability to kind of read the route lean. So if he feels like it's it's an out route or a corner route's going to break, and his ability to kind of step underneath that, get himself into a good angle to be an impact on the football or forces the quarterback away. Where that leads him into trouble is he's not as natural to be sticky in trail coverage. I also think he lacks real recovery burst. And because of that, when you talk about complex routes where he starts to lean and then it's a fake and he bites back the other direction, you create a ton of separation usually at that spot. We talk about more of those off-band coverage looks, but specifically in a lot of different areas, I think that he can have a little bit heavier footwork at times while also, again, like I said, some tighter transitions. Weave from off coverage to me is just not super natural. It's better at kind of the 45 degree angle, but from pedal to weave to open your half turn, I don't think that's as natural. He also tends to get into his half turn flips a little bit early, and I think some of that's protecting himself over top. It's kind of sit down the route, break it down underneath, but I do like that he plays with his good bend and sink. Now, what ties this along with his footwork, he plays with very patient steps a lot of times, especially when he's pedaling backwards. Patient steps, right, that keeps him under balance almost all the time, and he ties that along with pretty good knee bend that maintains throughout the rep, while also carrying sync within that top of the break. And with those things that are tied together, it allows him to have an ability to get from plant to drive and immediately get into a full acceleration. I mean, he turns into a sprinter like that. It's it's insane how fast that transition becomes, and that is very valuable from a slot cornerback position when you're talking about some of the level one routes that he can dive on. The full work to me allows him to come to balance at the top of the route, which makes some of the transitions a little bit better. Pretty fluid when you talk about some of those 45 degree angles that he tends to drop into to get depth rather than being a full pedal or a full weave that he's trying to create and again some of that more would probably show up from some of those off coverage alignments then in zone coverage which is an area where I really like Tavier Thomas where he stands out to me because he's flexible here but I love him in underneath zone coverage that's where he stands out the most to me there is a lot of good traits here first thing is he does a nice job of closing airspace and this is one area that I like CD Deuce but he does a really nice job of it as well where he doesn't necessarily just float in zone coverage now he has a good balance between this of so making sure he knows when he has to play high low keep depth and not squeeze on an underneath route well at the same time if there is a single route that crosses his face and he doesn't necessarily need to get depth and he needs to take it away he will squeeze and close the airspace rather than just floating into a zone and allowing easy completions that's one little aspect that I do love from underneath zone coverage depending on what the underneath zone coverage is strong eye balance this is another area that I really like it and what's great about him is when he's passing off levels up to the safeties which a lot of times he was asked to do with Houston where from the slot alignment presses vertical pass it off dive back down what he does so well and it's so quick is how quickly is to pass it off, find the quarterback's eyes while also at the same time reading the receiver that's crossing his face. It's very quick and he's very strong, very disciplined with eye balance underneath and you'll see him take away a lot of routes because of that. Now what you also see here is an issue that can show up again when he's trying to squeeze routes from the outside in or he's trying to transition and maintain that connection and you can see how he kind of starts to lose a lot of speed. As receiver starts to push off, he starts to lose a lot of his speed and that's where you create space. Utilizes and underneath coverage really gets shown off here as well. It's his ability to kind of maintain and stick with routes. You'll definitely see it like at the top of the route when they when they get behind him and he's passing it off but also then that ability with kind of the short steps to still be able to kind of feel out where the receiver is behind him, be able to step in front of routes and still maintain some sort of connection to where the receiver is, not just drifting once it passes him, then drifting into an area. Still maintaining a sense of where the receiver is. And then also, as I touched on, with some of the short steps, but also some of the ability, 45-degree openings, while also knee bend, playing with really good balance, it opens up a lot of redirect opportunities when he's in a little bit of rough positions, or he oversets a little bit. It's quick redirect, it's very quick footwork where there's not a ton of beating the drum to plant and drive back to the football, and that opens up so much within his ability to play in underneath zone coverage. I don't think he's the twitchiest defender necessarily, but I do think he plays a lot of patience and he can really get to acceleration quickly. And then at the same time, from inside out, he can kind of read and anticipate when you're going to get some outbreaking routes so he can get on top of it, right? Not be thrown off way too far on the play. Anticipate when a route is probably going to break down based on the receiver's body language and their pacing of the route. Then he has that ability to sink really well and mirror the receiver in that spot. So to me, he does a lot of things well from underneath zone coverage. And this is one of those examples that I really like. So you're going to see on this play where he starts to kind of just pass it off to the second level. And then it's like, all right, he's going to drive. But watch his eye balance here. You see how quickly he comes to balance, finds the quarterback's eyes. And he's like, wait a minute, the ball is probably going there. So he's able to then redirect and accelerate and try to undercut this route. Now, it's a little bit off on the angle and he can't necessarily get there, but he's able to then get into the tackle.
and also in a lot of different coverage variations, cover three, cover two, a lot of different coverage variations where I thought he was impactful. And when you go to the ball skills, while this is an area that he's necessarily always lit up kind of the stat sheet, what I do like about this is while there's limitations, there's limited length, right? I don't think some of the recovery burst is always necessarily there. I don't think the play speed matches what his 40 time is when you see him. He's caught and chasing and trailing routes. And then he also can take hit and miss angles when he's kind of in trail. While I like at times we're in trail where he'll kind of anticipate to undercut the route and you'll get some flashes like that was awesome he closed some airspace there but at the same time when you also see him in trail there's a lot of kind of like herky jerky coverage where he's trying to close the distance and he's forced to plant and redirect and you get these little redirect movements where it's not very fluid trying to kind of track a receiver and he's just slowly kind of losing ground and he has to try to recover and make it back up and I don't think he's that great in that area but I do like what the ball skills is that he attacks the hands at the catch point he kind of just rakes the football loose very good in discipline when he is in a trail spot and he can't look back for the ball to just attack the receiver's hands at the catch point while also at the same time with the eye balance it opens up a lot of things underneath so here's a great example of kind of that football intelligence here against Carolina understanding the situation how close they are to the goal line and immediately as soon as he passes this off again you see the eye balance he's disciplined in this spot has the balance to jump and dive on the route and he's very quick to accelerate dive on where the football is, find the hands, and have this thing knocked loose. And you'll get a lot of that kind of stuff. Now, he does have the flexibility to change directions when he is attacking downhill. This sets up much better balance for him where he can kind of create some knee bend to sink and kind of play it and redirect to get in on different angles. You'll see it as a run defender as well. He's able to square up tackles much better or square up blocks, but also same thing in coverage. He's able to kind of square when he's coming downhill. That way he's not just flying by guys left and right. Overall, when you talk about that football intelligence, the tacklers I touched on, He's a great form tackler. He plays really well when he's inside the box. He does a really nice job of getting into receiver blocks, right? Positioning, getting right into the chest, using a lot of force, being able to create separation, find the ball carry. After that, plays with an urgency off the backside, so you'll get a lot of those kind of things. The big knock here is that sometimes I don't feel like you get the wrap-up, but kind of just throw his body into the tackle. However, usually it's a really good, strong form tackle with real finish. And as a blitzer, I think there's plus effectiveness possibly here. The biggest issue is he doesn't bring a lot of make you miss. There's not a ton of like agility or a lot of shake as a pass rusher. Obviously, he's not going to have the power to just run guys over. Doesn't really do that to running backs either. So I think there's plus maybe ability or maybe just adequate ability as a blitzer because I don't see a ton of like make you miss as a blitzer. He'd be very impactful if he was just as a free rusher, of course. And he also does play with some patience, so he kind of lets things sort themselves out to give himself a lane to rush. But he doesn't have a ton of like make you miss or shake or much of a plan as a blitzer when he's confronted by any sort of locker. To give you an idea of the kind of tackler I think that this is, 131 career tackles on 21 missed tackles. To put that into context, Amik Robertson, who I really like as a tackler, he'll miss some, but I really like him there. He has 91 career tackles on 23 missed tackles. So I think that gives you kind of a good idea of how consistent it is. Is. And of course, that needs to be the case. One of the best strengths that I thought about Brian Branch was his impact as a run defender. I gave him an elite grade there coming out of draft, the highest area game out of the draft. And obviously, we saw that in year one, his ability to stay on top of blocks, get on top. I don't think he's that. I don't think he brings that looseness or agility. I don't think that he necessarily brings that to the table like Brian Branch does. Also, I think his coverage is much more limited from trail in particular, but also the mere match side of things. What he does well like Brian Branch is he's very patient in his footwork, and that helps him with ton and he also has a lot of the physical side while also bringing much better straight line speed technically speaking than Brian Branch to just straight up run with a guy down the field though I don't think the play speed consistently matches I get you'll get the ability to identify routes play routes really well in zone coverage which I love that aspect and you'll get flashes of really good angles to the football it's not as consistent as Brian Branch but you'll get flashes of it so there's things that he does well to me he'd be a great backup slot corner like this really kind of shows off a lot of his game and I want to give him some more love here so you kind of get that single step release by the receiver so you get patience off the line which I do like he's not oversetting on this play which can happen but you see he kind of loses it through kind of the stem and then through the top of the route but I will give him some love we've seen this as kind of a trait with a lot of these corners that we have brought in is they have that cornering ability to really flatline throughout the top of this route he's able to do that even without connection here and he's a little off with that pacing and he's able to flatline and get back into this play that's a real trait 
I think he'd be great there. In a pinch, could he play wide? Maybe, but I wouldn't want him to play wide. I don't think that'd be very natural for him at all. You'd want him in the slot. You want him to play in underneath zone coverage as much as possible. And then also, he has real real ability to pass routes off. He's a very smart cornerback underneath. You have to kind of give him help over top. Complex routes are going to be an issue without help over top. Guys are just going to run away from him. But at the same time, he does check a lot of boxes to be a very good level one, level two impactful player, specifically because of his run support and also some solid blitzing upside as well, while also being a big time special teamer and a really good locker room presence from everything we know about Tavier Thomas. So to me, he'd be an excellent slot addition. I think he'd be an upgrade there. And what we saw last season, we didn't really have a natural backup slot corner. So when Brian Branch went down for a short amount of time and Will Harris stepped in, I love me some Will Harris. It just wasn't still super net natural for him. Tavier Thomas won't be Brian Branch. He's not that. But what he would be is he'd be a much more sound backup where you're like, okay, we know that this is pretty natural to him. And to me, that's super valuable. And it's necessary depth because we do see when teams go heavier personnel and the Lions want to take a safety off, allow Brian Branch to play safety, and there's no slot on the field. Brian Branch just wouldn't come off the field at times last season. So it's nice to have depth behind that. That way that flexibility stays alive. Well, you got to have depth. Lions have said that you got to have depth. They started with Amik. Now, maybe they go do it with Tavier Thomas. I love the idea of it. I don't think the price point would be huge. He's only 28 years old. He'd be awesome on special teams. And you got a lot of guys replaced there between Jerry Jacobs, Kendall Wilder, Will Harris. An awesome gun gunner. I could see him being a really good jammer as well on kind of the punt return sets. And he's played on really every single special teams unit. So, to me, makes a ton of sense. I'd be intrigued if I were the Lions at the right price point. I'm going to leave right there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, Prop, for watching. And I'm out.